I'm replacing the membranes and the pre-filter in our Vectamax whole house or commercial reverse osmosis system. And along the way, I'm going to share with you pro tips on how to do the replacement, but, but also when to do the replacement on each of those. And it all starts right now. Hi, I'm Gary the Water Guy, and I simplify water filtration to help you conquer crappy water for your family. So one thing we always suggest with a commercial or whole house reverse osmosis system is to keep some records. Ideally on a daily basis, but at least two or three times a week. What you should be doing is monitoring what the uh, TDS is coming out of the reverse osmosis system. So that way you'll know if the TDS starts creeping up, it's a sure sign that it's almost time to replace those membranes. So another thing you need to check is the flow rate. So this is the product water here, and as you can see the flow rate has dropped right off. It's less than half a gallon per minute, should be a whole lot higher than that. And then of course you need to check the TDS, total dissolved solids. So with this system you can see we have a dual TDS meter here. So the inbound TDS is 410 parts per million. And if we check to the outbound, in other words the product water coming from the RO is 101. So it definitely should be less than 40 parts per million, significantly less. But as you can see it's way above so it's definitely time to replace those membranes. So the first thing we need to do is shut down the water. So in this case I'm just going to close the inlet valve going into the automatic backwashing filter and as you can see the pressure drops. Once the pressures drop we can shut the power off and it's always best to unplug the RO just to make sure. So we'll replace the filter first so the first thing we'll do is push the button just to release any pressure that's in the filter housing and then use the filter housing wrench. Screw it. And as you can see, the filter is somewhat dirty. Um, very cheap insurance to replace these filters. I definitely recommend you replace them once a month, no matter how dirty they are, because it's going to protect their membrane and it's going to uh, protect the whole system. I always recommend when it comes time to replace the filter that you protect this O-ring here with plumber's clear silicone grease. And uh, you don't want to use a Vaseline or a product like that because it'll actually degrade the, the O-ring, but plumber's clear silicone grease obviously contains silicone, so because of that it'll actually make that um, O-ring last longer, and when you're tightening it, it'll keep it from stretching. So as you can see now I'm wearing gloves as I put the uh, filter inside the housing. So I usually tighten it hand tight, and then just give it a little bit more with your filter housing wrench, just to make sure it doesn't leak. So next up, we have to remove the caps on the end of the membranes to get the old membranes out. So you'll need to undo these bolts on these clamps here to slide them down. Now if your system has four membranes, obviously you'd have to do this four times. If your system only has one membrane, you'd only have to do it once. Now for this particular one, I found that uh, the bolts on this side were 14 millimeters and the nuts on the other side were 13. So anyway, so all you do is just loosen that up. And it's the same on all sides. And as always, lefty loosey ready tighty. And if yours are stuck like these ones, you can see that there's a small gap uh, on the cap. And, uh, and in there you can insert a screwdriver and then from there carefully pry the caps off. But you need to go around all sides and apply equal pressure to be able to rock those caps and get them off. And then you can pull the membranes out. Now you'll probably need to use some uh, pliers or something like that and rock the membrane, rotating it slightly and pull it out. And when you pull it out, just keep, be aware of where the O-ring is. So this one has the O-ring at the top. So you need to make sure when you replace it with the new membrane, the O-ring also goes to the top. And we'll plop that in the bucket, and we'll do the same with the second one. There she comes. So this one you can see there is no O-ring at the top, the O-ring's at the bottom. So we need to install it the same way. And yes, there's some water being spilled. And we're back with our rubber gloves again, and uh, so now we need to put the new membranes in. So I've got the uh, new membranes here already. So I have already greased them with Plumber's Clear Silicone Grease. And this one goes with the O-ring down. 
and there's some water in there so you'll feel some resistance there it is push that all the way down and the other one the little ring goes up push that all the way down and then you can see some some uh, grease on the o-rings here so again i would apply some more all right and then we push these back in try to keep the pressure even on all sides when you're pushing them in so they're nice and straight so now we need to put the clamps back on and you can see how important these clamps are because they actually keep the caps on. And again, make sure you locate the clamps so that they're partially on uh, below this, um, this groove here, but it is partially on the uh, cap and partially on, the, on this part here of the stainless steel. So you can see that it's actually in this area here holding the caps down. Now, when you tighten up these clamps, you need to be careful that the gap here is the same on both sides to make sure you've got equal pressure on both sides. And at this point we can actually lose the gloves because it just makes things more clumsy. And as always, righty tighty, lefty loosey. Loosen off on this one a little bit. And we go back and forth until the gap is the same on both sides. So before you turn the system back on and check for leaks, you need to run a temporary line going from the product side of the reverse osmosis system to the drain. Because the membranes come with a preservative in them and you need to flush that preservative out before you run your water to your tank or whatever you're using your reverse osmosis water for. So you can probably see over here I ran a temporary line to the drain before I start it up. So then the next thing we're going to do is add some hydro, add some power, and check for leaks. Turn the water back on. And you can probably see the pressure going up over there. And you can see the pressure coming up over here. Pre-filter pressure, post-filter pressure. And then this is going to be operating pressure, which we'll see once I turn it on. Now we have to be careful when we turn it on. We have to watch for the operating pressure. So this system operates at 130 PSI. So we just have to check uh, to make sure that it's still operating at 130 PSI with the new membranes. And you can see the bubbles coming through and the operating pressure is rising. And you will control the operating pressure with the, the handle over here. Well, you'll see, as you tighten it, you'll see the pressure rises. As you loosen it, you'll see the pressure drop. So it's better to have the pressure too low to start with so that you're getting a lot of, uh, to get rid of all the bubbles. And you can see the reading here of the pre reject water to the product water. So at this point, we can tighten it a little bit, start raising the pressure. And by the way, you can check the TDS at this stage too. So you can see the outlet TDS is already lower than it was with the old membranes. It'll drop down more. And you can see the inlet uh, TDS is still around 400. And you can see the outlet TDS is around 22 parts per million and it's dropping. And as fewer and fewer bubbles are going through, you can see the operating pressure is rising. So again, we wanna make sure that for this system, it doesn't exceed 130 PSI. So the system ran for over an hour flushing the membrane. I've reconnected the line going now to the tank instead of to the drain, and we can start filling the tank. Click up here for your next video on whole house or commercial reverse osmosis systems, and I'll see you there.